So the fact that I was, you know, so scared that I'd experienced these changes in my body, feeling like, you know, wow, it's not like I've been sitting around picking out, but I've gained this weight, you know, my clothes are tight, I hate where I am, I've got to get on a program. And it was kind of like this panic situation. And what I told you guys in those posts before, I'd read so many books, so I already had a ton of knowledge. You know, I'd done Body for Life in the past. We all know, you know, focus on protein, chicken and fish is best, vegetables are best, you know, but there were all of these rules floating around, and I'm trying to follow them. And then, you know, when you're blogging about it too, you have a lot of people watching you. So then you have a lot of people, fully well intentioned, that are offering their advice. But here's what happens. You have all of these people that have very specific ideas about what works for them, and then they feel that it's not a problem to tell you, don't do that, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong. When you have like 200 people, and I'm exaggerating there, telling you all different things, you, f you finally get to the point where it's like, nothing is right. There's nothing that's right because there's some rule that's gonna tell me anything in my fridge, anything that I can get at a store, anything that I can get at a restaurant, anything that I can get at a drive-thru is potentially wrong. And you get to the point where everything in your day is revolving around what I should eat, when I should eat, how I should eat it. And that's not normal. It's like then food gets this place in your brain and in your life where it's of utmost importance. So you're putting food like up at the top of everything. And, and you think that you're trying to make it, you know, this, this good for you thing, right? Where it's like I'm trying to eat the best food. Food should just be something that it's like, and, and I'm sorry, some people disagree with me on this. It shouldn't be the be all end all. That's what you put, you know, we're supposed to, in, we, we are supposed to enjoy food, okay? We're not supposed to be gluttonous, okay? Even the Bible, the Bible tells us that. You're supposed to enjoy the food that, that is here on this earth and but enjoy it to, uh, you know, a minimum. Have, have a taste instead of having, you know, the entire cake or the entire pizza and, you know, the, the big portions, the uh, super size. I mean, that's what in our country ha has gotten people completely out of touch. We're obsessed with food either from a dieting perspective where we're so obsessed with what we can't have and then we obsess because basically if like this this is the whole world of food that that is in existence, right? And when you're dieting, you're saying I can only have that. So it's kind of like Adam and Eve, right? You're like you can have all of this but you can't have that. What are you going to focus on? You're going to focus on what you can't have. And you feel like you're denying yourself. So then all of a sudden, it's like supply and demand. What you're not allowed to have all of a sudden becomes so much more appealing. Okay? When you deny yourself sugar or even fruit or even a, a glass of milk because you think it's so bad for you and you can't get to looking like this or like this, um, or even like this, you know, this isn't someone chiseled and ripped, but you know, she's slim. If you think that you can't enjoy that or have a glass of wine and be healthy, you know, then it's like you're not having fun, you're killing yourself at, your, at the gym, you're obsessed, and you're not enjoying your life. And then everything else that you're not letting yourself have becomes so much more appealing than it probably really is. A lot of what I've been noticing now that I'm really not putting limits on what I'm eating. Like if I really am somewhere and I want to have a cupcake or whatever, I'm really taking, finally, okay, I've tried to do this before, but the Eat Stop Eat program for me and fasting and realizing that I can go without food and it's not the end of the world, it's helped me that when I am eating, I'm not looking at food like it's the be all end all. I'm looking at a cupcake and going, that looks really yummy, but now I'm sitting there because I can have it. And it's not like this crazy cheat food, right? It's just something like, hey, I'm gonna have a, a sweets, you know, a sweet treat right now. And you go and I find myself like tasting it and I'm paying attention to how it tastes. And a lot of the stuff that I was so obsessed about when I was saying, that's off limits, that's off limits, that's off limits. Now that I say, okay, you know what? If I'm at the airport and I feel like having a candy bar, I'm gonna buy a candy bar. And I eat it and I'm like, you know, really paying attention to how it tastes. Like, is this something that's just really yummy? If I have a Godiva chocolate bar, that's gonna be really yummy. But like, I got a Mounds bar at the airport the other day. And I'm, I'm like, I took it out and I looked at it and it was kind of like, it just looked like it was, not fresh. How can a candy bar be fresh, really? But I mean, there was like a powdery substance on it, um, probably some kind of preservative or whatever. But you know, I was tasting it and I'm like, 
you know, this just isn't that tasty. But in my mind, because, you know, for how many years I haven't had candy bars, the thought of having a Mounds bar, which is chocolate, and there's absolutely no protein in there, and there's nothing good for me in it, I would never have it. But then I'm having it, and I'm like, this really is not that big of a deal. When do you think the next time is I'm going to pick up a Mounds bar? Probably, I, I can't even imagine why I would. It's just not that big of a deal. So it's, I, I think a lot of what um, binging and, and, and that kind of cheating happens when you are constantly dieting and you're constantly saying, you can't have this, you can't have this, you can't have that, this is the only way for you to lose weight and get skinny. Um, that's just wrong. Absolutely can you do a comp diet and get into competition shape and get up on stage and that's when you're gonna see your abs pop you know, like this with the guy, right? Or like this with the girl. You're not gonna have abs like that. Very few people can have abs like that, okay? My trainer will tell you that, Jenny Little will tell you that. You can't have abs like that walking around unless you are literally every single day um, working out, probably doing at least an hour of cardio every day, um, probably having such a pristine diet that you never drink, you probably don't have diet soda, um, and you're probably having really nothing but chicken, uh, brown rice and vegetables and oatmeal and protein powder and then you can look that way but I mean that is a lot of work to have your abs absolutely pop out like that some people um, when I saw Dara Torres you know at the um, more reinvention convention you know, she lifted up her shirt she had abs showing were they popping that much no but they were kick butt um, so some people can do it but realistically you have to realize you can get looking good, but to get, you know, stage ready, you do. You have to follow that, you know, beans, broccoli, chicken, rice, and you've got to eat, um, you know, usually I think most people, you do. You have to have a lot of protein. It's all about building muscle. I mean, and, and in that case, you guys, it is. It is like a scientific equation. Anybody that's competed before and gotten up on stage those last four weeks, okay, you're starting to vary your carbs based on how it's going to make your muscles bulk up. And then you take the water out so that, of your body. You start dehydrating yourself so that the muscles that you've built up, the fat comes off, but then also the water that fluffs up on top of the muscle comes out. That's what makes these people look that way on stage. You're actually denying your body like simple things like water so that you can get up on stage and have your muscles that are underneath pop out, okay? It's not natural. And most of those people we all know, anybody can jump in and tell you, if they go out and have a hamburger, they can gain 10 pounds in a day. That's how much of like a scientific alteration you're doing to your body to look that way. So in that case, yeah. You know, when you have a trainer who's saying, you're gonna get up on stage, you've gotta be at eight or 10% or 12% body fat. That's the kind of psychotic dieting you have to do. Some people can do it and they're, they're awesome at it. Jessica's done it. Um, April is really good at it. Um, a lot of you, I mean, obviously Jenny Lynn is a pro at it. She trains people. She's been up on stage a million times. She's awesome. She knows what works, but guess what? When I was doing that diet, um, and I had results with that diet, people, excuse me, but when I would get to the point where I would tell her, and I was doing an hour of cardio a day, I was doing this or that, the first thing that she would say to me when I would say, I don't feel like I'm losing fat, she'd say, we gotta cut your diet. At the end of the day, anyone's gonna tell you, regardless of what you're eating, if you're not losing fat, your body needs to eat less, period. So if that's the case, then we all have to find a way that we can live and eat eat healthy, eat reasonably, but eat less, okay? So for some people that means, and for me in the past, it worked this way, was to say, okay, I, I do well keeping my calories at 1,200 to 1,500 calories a day and working out about an hour a day. Um, what I found was like the first quarter of this year, trying to do that for some reason, because again, I was putting so much emphasis on getting in all of these meals and doing the post-workout recovery shakes. It's very easy to shoot for 1,500, but then all of a sudden you add and you're up to you know 2,000. It's very easy to do this. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna shoot another vlog. I don't know if I'll post them all today because I feel bad shooting two days with three vlogs, but I, I kind of need to just say all this. I, I hope you guys aren't mad. 